Hello again and welcome back to Bad Movie Review. Today I'd like to discuss a movie I just rewatched for the probably hundredth time, and that is Nosferatu. That is one of the best and oldest Dracula movies ever made. Uh, it was made in 1921 and released in 1922, and stars Max Schreck as Count Orlock. Um, since it was an unauthorized adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula, there are a few differences, such as the names were changed, a few of the situations condensed and changed, but mostly it's the names. Um... But yeah, it, it was um, a pretty critical success in its day, and it continues to be a lasting, it leaves a lasting impression on the viewer. It has a very distinct mood, style of filming, and very good use of shadow and visual effects, considering that it's a silent film and that it is almost 100 years old now. Um... It's one that every horror fan, if you like horror movies, you need to see this movie. You owe it to F.W. Um, Murnau, the uh, director, because that movie influenced a lot of horror movies afterward and cinema in general. It's a very groundbreaking work that has a long lasting legacy all the way through to today. And in my opinion, it is one of the best Dracula movies before all the cliches, all the stupid jokes, all the lame uh, romanticizing. There's no sparkly vampires in here, no brooding, navel-gazing teenagers. No, he's a monster. He's a creepy-looking weirdo, and he's scary. Max Shrek is a creepy-looking dude with all that makeup on. And I don't know, I've never seen him without makeup, but he'd probably be creepy without it. Um, and it was pretty popular at the time. There were a few technical problems, like they did film some night scenes during the day. But in the supposedly official uh, versions, those scenes had a blue filter so that you could tell it was supposed to be night. But that was really a problem of the silent film era. Um... Overall, this movie is a must-see. If I don't want to ruin anything for you, it, it is a silent film. It's It fell into public domain a long time ago. Uh, Florence Stoker, the widow of the late Brom Stoker, sued the crap out of the film company for cr copyright infringement. So much so, this was the only movie they ever released because they went bankrupt. And the judge ordered all copies of the film to be destroyed. And they thought they had gotten them all, but a few prints had slipped out and apparently made it to worldwide distribution. And that's the only reason we have this movie now. And it's a masterpiece. Um, if, you, if you don't like silent movies, I highly recommend giving it a shot anyway. It's a fun film. It's It really sticks to the Dracula story. It's got some really good early special effects. And yeah, some of them look a little dated now, but they still have kind of a an impression they can give you. And the fact that Count Orlock looks super creepy is um, definitely a winner. Some of the newer versions of the movie use the English um, post-Dracula uh, lawsuit translations. And they just went ahead and changed everything back to Count Dracula. And instead of Hutter, it's you know, uh, Harker and they changed the names back into the regular Dracula motifs. If you get a chance though, get the, uh, the original where it's count Orlock and it is way creepier. I think sometimes the newer ones where they change the dialogue to count Dracula have some scenes missing is what I've noticed. And I think that's partly because it was, it fell into public domain. Um, you could probably find this on YouTube, actually, because most silent movies are in the public domain. Um, a lot of the exteriors still exist, too. Uh, and it was filmed in Weismar and uh, Lubbock in Germany. So you can actually go and visit some of these places and see these buildings that are still out there. Um, this movie was banned in Sweden, specifically, uh, because it was so scary. 
Ooh, scary. Uh, according to the Internet Movie Database, the ban was lifted in 1972. Remember, this movie came out in the 20s. That's a 50-year ban. That's pretty impressive, and there's really only a handful of movies that can say that they're so scary that they got banned. You talk about, like, Cannibal Holocaust, that was more banned for gore. Uh, I Spit on Your Grave was banned because it's an hour and a half rape fest. But this movie was banned because it was too scary. Not a lot of people can say that their movie was banned because it scared the bejesus out of everyone. So, yeah, uh, <laughs> that should be reason enough right there. Um, yeah, there's a lot of really cool, like, side things about the movie that I could go into, but I would just bore you to tears with pointless movie facts. Let's be honest. The film is a classic. The cinematography was really good. They did a lot for what they had to work with. Um... And if you uh, watch real closely, you can see the captain of a ship tie a granny knot instead of an actual seaman's knot, uh, which I believe was a um, probably supposed to be a slip knot. But yeah, you're not going to secure yourself to the the bridge doing that. Anyway, if you get a chance, check it out. I highly recommend seeing it on Blu-ray with a digitally remastered version. Uh, Kino Classics has a really good two-disc set. Um, I think my copy was about 25 bucks and it's worth every penny. I would have paid twice that for this film. It's a classic. It's one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. It's genuinely creepy. And if, if you don't think so, you have, um, something that clanks when you walk. Cause man, uh, you're a little more hardcore than I am. I've seen a lot of horror movies and this one. That had a lurk in your brain for a while. So if you get a chance, definitely check out Nosferatu. It's a great movie. Uh, I know modern audiences, especially younger people, don't like silent films. Uh, there are ones with soundtracks, obviously, that just uh, play music. So you could at least do that. But visually stunning film. One of the best movies ever made, in my opinion. And definitely one of the best from the silent era. Very influential movie. And uh, everybody should own a copy of this one. This is ranks up there with, you know, on the top 100 must-see movies of all time, in my opinion. Uh, as far as silent movies go, it's this one in Metropolis, or about it. Uh, those are the only must-sees, in my opinion. Like, absolutely must-see, especially for horror film fans. You need to see this movie. It's been referenced and remade. The 1979 Klaus Kinski movie, which is a remake called Nosferatu the Vampire, was a pale comparison to this one. Uh, the Willem Dafoe 2005 movie about Nosferatu was a jokey kind of homage to this, but even it doesn't come anywhere near this. Uh, not The original Nosferatu is, um, is a classic of cinema, and it's uh, an icon. It's one of the best German movies ever made. Um, arguably up there with Triumph of the Will, which was a total propaganda piece for the Nazis, but still a masterwork of cinematography. Um, and this, I think, is the pinnacle of cinema that came out of Germany pre-World War II, for sure, and probably for many years afterward. Probably the entire history of German filmmaking, but I'm a little biased because I really like this movie. So be sure and check it out if you get a chance. Um, you could get a copy real cheap because it is in public domain. It's so old. It is from the 20s. Come on. 1922. And since it was filmed in 21 and the result of the lawsuit, its copyright has expired a long time ago. And, um, yeah, I can't say enough about it. It was a fun film. There's a lot of action. Uh, Count Orlock is super creepy and he sneaks around and... People have their silent movie reactions. You can see their faces and read the cue cards for yourself. Go out there and get a copy of this movie. It's amazing. And that'll do it for this time. And be sure and check back next time. Check out some of the other uh, broadcasts I have and see what you think. And uh, if you like what I had to say, give us a thumbs up and tell your friends. Thanks for listening.